Concern as far no, as fire no, health? no. Um, I, I think that we checked it out. Uh, obviously, there was some, some. Uh, it was wet, but uh, the wind kind of took care of that as far as the field. So we're gonna get through our day, um, but just make sure guys are, you know, co cognizant of the wet field. But no, we're 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 gonna have to play in those conditions at some point as well during the season. Kershaw threw a bullpen session yesterday. How do you feel after it? He said he felt good, and it was really really good pen. Um, I think right now. He's uh, going to be on his, like, five-day routine as far as, you know, pens and sides and throwing. And so it's really good. How throttled back is he now after ramping up for the WBC? I think he's right where he needs to be. I think uh, everything, uh, you know, all that stuff as far as the prep, mentally, physically, uh, we took a few days to kind of reset. So I think he's right where he, we would uh, we'd have hoped. Peralta and Freeman are playing back-to-back. -back. Is that just like a WBC? It is. Thing? It is. Um, talking to both those guys, they want to sort of get as many at-bats but still being managed the workload. So to go back-to-back, -back, it, it was pretty easy. They'll both be off tomorrow. And Mookie, when's he, when's he going to get his uh, Mookie uh, will play tomorrow. Um, and he's on the same program as Jason. I wanted uh, Jason to kind of take some more lives, and then we'll get him out there. Will he play right field? Mookie will play. Uh, you know, I'm not sure yet. Uh, oh. He he might. I, I, he probably will, but I'm going to get him into a couple, uh, two three games, uh, at second base. Any change with Vargas? Cleared to do anything more? I don't think so. Uh, from yesterday, I, I think uh, there might be some more stuff in the cage. Hopefully, um, what I do, what I have heard is that he's uh, his grip strength is. Uh, is uh, back to normal. So that was kind of the biggest kind of test to get that grip strength back. Um, so so I would assume with that, uh, he should be doing more stuff in the cage. Um, but when he swings in a game, I don't know that answer yet. I did it. Um, like how many games at bats do you want to see him take in the spring? I, I, I would say, um, I, don't, I, w I would say 40 to 50, but it doesn't have to be in the game. I, I think that you know, we've done a good job of getting guys on the backfield. So he'll get enough at bats. Um, but just like he did yesterday, getting out on the field and playing, making plays, like that, that's important as well. Anything to read into having Trace in center and Chris in left? Just that's no, where it tends to no, work. no. And I'm going to get uh, David as well in, in uh, center field. Um, I don't see it happening this season, but for the WBC that he might – Play some there, so just to kind of get him there. So nothing to, well, nothing to that. We talked a lot about you know the roster changes and different faces and all the different kind of positional questions you guys are going to have to answer this spring. But does it feel like already you have a, a good-ish sense of how the team's going to look on opening day and kind of what roles different guys might slot into, or is there still a lot to be determined there? Uh, there's still things to be determined. I, I think that our guys uh, are very uh, understand the landscape of our roster um, and how it potentially could shake out. Um, so that with that, there is an openness to kind of be open to playing left field, center field, uh, second base, you know. We have some, you know, Miguel Rojas is a prime example. Um, so we have a really good, we have a good idea of how it's gonna shake out, but we got a lot of good players and, you know, things always do change. So we've gotta be obviously open to that, but, you know, guys are playing well. Kind of like you know what a lot of the pieces are, just kind of figuring out how they all fit together. Yeah. How, how much third base do you do you think uh, Rojas might play? How much do you think he'll move off a shortstop for you if all things, everybody's healthy? You know, I, I think um, how much third base, I don't know. I do expect him to play some third base. Um, um, I expect Miguel to stay over at second base. Um, I expect him to play some short, some second. Uh, potentially even, I know he's got a first base glove. So um, I just think for me, uh, the challenge that I that I want is for myself is to make sure I keep him uh, relevant. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's already got an openness to, you know, just to be on the baseball field to help in any way. So now it's up to me to figure out uh, how I can give guys a day off uh, to keep Miguel involved. Because I do, I do think he is uh, very additive. Is it uh, is it more valuable to have a weapon like that now with no not being able to shift and 
having more range. Off absolutely, the bench when absolutely, you have late in the game. absolutely. Um, that's a, uh, you know, that's a different question. Um, I gotta, I, I want to see how, um, that plays out as far as how our guys defend. But having a plus defender with range, it's uh, the value of defense is going to go exponentially more, and it'll show itself more that without the shift. I know in the offseason you kind of mentioned that Geeky might see some time at left. Is that still kind of you know, I, I, I don't see any downside in him taking fly balls out there. Um, you know, things change all the time. So um, for him to get comfortable out there doesn't hurt. Jay, with the, with the pitch clock, um, guys around the league are saying maybe the, the pitch calm thing might be even more important now. Um, do you anticipate your pitchers, all of them, using it right away? I know last year there was some. Um, I do. Uh, guys held out to the end, um, some guys, but we got them there. And I think that our guys, I'd like to think they're smart enough to understand that uh, taking their what they've always done or their stubbornness, put that to the side and do what's smart and efficient will only help them. So um, I would expect all of our guys to use it. Some people also mentioning maybe pitchers will start calling their pitches themselves. I, I think that that's pitcher to pitcher. Um, I don't think that, uh, you know, there's a rhythm to pitching as far as getting the ball and getting set. So so some guys might do it, but I would still say most guys will just use that kind of catcher because there's enough time. Do you like that idea, pitchers, being able to call their own pitches like that? If they do their homework and, and really understand um, how to get a hitter out, um, but if a pitcher is calling it, then there's certainly conviction, which uh, is a good thing when you're going to deliver a baseball. Um, but that's not really how we do it. But uh, if there's a good reason behind it, I'm okay with it. And, uh, with, with Diego, obviously he hit in the rotation. Uh, where is he right now in game calling? Um, you know, yeah, I, I think that there's some things that uh, with the receiving that we're trying to address with Diego and um, – there's a lot of opportunity to clean some things up. Uh, with the game calling, I think the game calling is very subjective. Um, you know, there's one group of people that could say he's a great game caller, and there's another group that can say he doesn't call well. And this is not just specific to Diego. So I don't know enough. I know that he's got great makeup. He wants to learn. He asks the right questions. And so it's our job to educate him on hitters and – his job to learn his pitchers, our, our pitchers, um, to know what they can and can't do. So uh, it works both ways. But for me, I'm very pleased with Diego. I'm very bullish on him. I like him a lot. Is he getting under today? Because I know that happens. Uh, Barnes is starting off. I think so, yeah. I think Diego will piggy. I think Diego's piggybacking today. Yeah, I think so. Or, uh, you know what? If he's not, he's going to take an at bat. He might be the DH. He's going he's gonna to either uh, hit. On the back end, or come in and catch you. Well, with Chris Taylor quickly, just is there anything you're hoping to see from him this spring, or is there anything that you've seen thus far, or kind of looking for, whether it's in games? Just what are you seeing from him? I guess. Um, you know, I think Chris has a uh, obviously just to continue to build the arm strength, be healthy. Um, so that's one part of it. Because um, last year, moving from the infield to the outfield, just didn't do his arm favors, any favors. Um, so being able to have that ability, and I think that's one thing. Uh, the other thing is um, he's a very high maintenance, he has a high maintenance swing. And so to find some consistency um, with that for him is, is obviously important. More, it's really important because his swing, there's a lot more variables in his swing. Are you seeing him get to a more consistent space? Not yet, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and he would say the same thing. Yeah. <laughs>